What's up Chiefs Kingdom, Noah Gray here, tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to Joss's channel and check out showmefootball.com. What is up Chiefs Kingdom, welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Josh Fan of showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com covering your Kansas City Chiefs. And we've got some news as the Kansas City Chiefs have finally re-signed free agent defensive end Mike Dana to a three-year, $24 million deal with $13 million guaranteed. This move happened late yesterday evening. Um, it seems like the Chiefs love doing news drops on Friday nights because that's when they've made pretty much all of their moves. But this was pretty much a no-brainer move for Kansas City and one that a lot of people expected, especially after the team had traded Legereus Sneed and opened up that cap space. One of the first things that insiders were saying that the Kansas City Chiefs would look to do with that cap space is re-sign some of their own free agents, such as Donovan Smith and Mike Dana. And bringing back Mike Dana means that the Kansas City Chiefs are returning their entire defensive line group from last year, which is good because this is the defensive line group from last year that was second in the league in sacks. You brought back Chris Jones, you brought back Mike Dana, Charles Amenehu should be back. And then that's the other important aspect of this move is that uh, you need a defensive end depth because Charles Amenehu most likely is going to miss the first portion of next season. And so you needed that depth, someone that can come in, give you good snaps and play plenty of them. Mike Dana, his snap count has increased every year as well as his production. Um, so I think this was a no brainer for the Chiefs and signing Mike Dana is a good move. Definitely good depth. But there's a couple things that I will say about this signing. I feel like this one um, is universally accepted by Chiefs fans, universally loved. Everyone kind of loves Mike Dana, including the Chiefs and his teammates. I know there was that one clip from the franchise where they gave Mike Dana a tablet and it was a video of all of his teammates saying that he was like the hardest working guy on the team and um, always is underappreciated. So I think this is a good locker room pickup. This is a good on the field pickup. Mike Dana is a quality defensive end to have in this rotation. But with all that being said, uh, I would not let this preclude the Chiefs from still bringing in more defensive linemen. Um, right now, it looks like they're running it back on the defensive line, but I wouldn't let this stop them from drafting defensive line. I also wouldn't let this stop them from uh, even bringing in another veteran, especially because you're not going to have Charles and here for that first portion of the year. And if there's one gripe that I have with this Mike Dana signing the contract isn't terrible and I think Dana definitely deserved that payday and he was projected to get a lot more from some other team at the beginning of the offseason a lot of people thought that the Chiefs weren't going to be able to afford to bring him back but with this being a three-year 24 million dollar deal um I'm a little confused as to who the Chiefs were bidding against because Mike Dana was sitting on the market like it's already April if you're still a free agent by now, most likely you're only getting a one-year deal and it's going to be a cheap one-year deal. And so for the Chiefs to go out and give Mike Dana a three-year deal, multi-year deal worth 20 plus million dollars, who are you bidding against? What was the reason to do this contract? And I'm not complaining. It's just a little confusing to me. Like it's not a bad contract. I'm not losing sleep over it. Mike Dana's a fine player, but, um, you know, I, I saw Nate Taylor of The Athletic put out a report saying that several teams were interested in Mike Dana. Feels like a little bit of a PR spin to me. If teams really wanted him, he wouldn't have been sitting on the market in April, three weeks from the NFL draft. If the Chiefs don't do this deal, Mike Dana signs a one-year deal with somebody else in time for training camp after the draft. So again, not complaining, just a little bit confused as to who the Chiefs were bidding against here, giving Mike Dana a multi-year deal. I think Mike Dana is a good defensive end three or four, but the problem starts to arise whenever he's playing starter snaps. And when Charles Amenehu is out for the first portion of next year, I fear that the Chiefs are going to entrust Mike Dana to start there and hold down that side of the defensive line. And I think that's where he starts to become a little more inefficient because if you look at the uh, time to pressure statistics and the pass rush win rate statistics, Mike Dana was um, towards the bottom of the league in pass rush win rate. He doesn't win a lot of his one-on-ones, definitely not out on the edge. His true value comes from the fact that he's versatile and can play on the interior. And that's also where a lot of his double teams come from because if you look at the other axis on that chart that I'm showing, Mike Dana was double teamed a lot. Most of that is from his double teams being or lining up 
as a defensive tackle, but when you look at his pass rush win rate, all things considered, it just wasn't very good. I think Mike Dan is a fine player. He's a fine defensive end three or four, but he's exclusively a cleanup sack guy whose numbers benefit a lot from playing next to Chris Jones. And I think a lot of other GMs saw through that and they saw through Dana's numbers. And that's why his free agent market wasn't as hot as some Chiefs fans thought it was going to be. I think this was a classic case of a lot of us overvaluing one of our own players when the rest of the league just doesn't quite see them that way. Mike Dan is a good rotational guy. I don't think he's a starter. I wouldn't let this stop you from bringing in another starter at defensive end. Mike Dan is a good DN three or four. That said, you know, this is... A great contract for him. I'm happy for him. This is a great job by his agent. Um, but don't let this preclude the Kansas City Chiefs from targeting another defensive end, whether that's in free agency or in the draft. Because when you don't have Charles Amenehu for those first six to eight games, you're going to really feel that. Because a guy like Mike Dana isn't meant to be starting and playing 90% of the defensive snaps and should not be entrusted to win a bunch of his one-on-ones out on the edge. Hopefully, though... The Chiefs expect Felix Inudike Uzama to take a step forward next year, and he can start to play more of those snaps out at defensive end because he has a little more athleticism and a little bit more juice. And then Mike Dana can really provide some value on the inside for you because we know that the defensive tackle room is pretty weak for the Kansas City Chiefs. But, you know, hey, for the most part, this was a good signing. Not too many complaints from me. I don't love the contract, but I don't hate it either. I just don't think you should have been handing out a multi-year deal this late in free agency for Mike Dana. But this could just be the Chiefs saying, hey, we want to take care of one of our own players that's viewed very well outside of the organization for potential future free agents giving Mike Dana that deal. And, you know, props to Mike Dana. He came in here as a fifth-round draft pick. Fifth-round draft picks don't pan out very often but Mike Dana did and he's become a mainstay in the Chiefs defensive end rotation so that is my analysis on the Kansas City Chiefs bringing back Mike Dana but I want to hear from you guys what do you guys think of the Chiefs bringing back Mike Dana do you think they're done on the defensive line let me know down below all that being said make sure you like share and subscribe so more Chiefs fans can find this and make sure you check out my work on showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com for more Chiefs coverage make sure you hit that notification bell too so you don't miss a post I'll see you all in the next one Go Chiefs!